Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson, and this is Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors YouTube channel. Um, I thought on this video I would dive into smaller EDC knives that are effective in the field. Now, the reason I make that distinction, effective in the field, is because there are all kinds of different knives out there that may have that wow factor that in my opinion are not necessarily that effective in the field okay um as a matter of fact a lot of times if a knife has that wow factor i find that it's not a good field knife right there are different there are certain aspects of it that could be improved upon for use in the field and that's what my life is all about. What works in the field, okay? Um, so, you guys stay tuned. We're gonna talk about all these knives. There are more, absolutely. But these are all knives that are in the 2.5 inch to four-ish inch blade lengths. And what I feel to be effective smaller EDC field knives so you guys stay tuned we'll get right to it now really stay there you're gonna like this video <laughs> got me some sushi Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mm, 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 A little bit of ginger. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So. Where are we going to start? <laughs> Alright, so we'll start with... Now, not all these knives are production, budget, you can afford them type knives, okay? Some of these knives are rather expensive, okay? Uh, and I'll tell you which ones are and which ones aren't. So we're going to start with this one right here. This is a neck knife that I designed, okay, that is made by Brian Sells at English Mountain Knives. Now Brian right now is in the process of building me one of my Delta Whiskey Vipers. I've turned that design over to him because the other maker went back to college and he can't do them anymore so i'm turning it over to brian sells and maybe he'll get that knife to me soon hmm. <laughs> okay so here it is it's called the little hawk necker the little hawk necker basically the way this works is i work with several custom knife makers who i feel are good at what they do right plain and simple um, he builds the knife, they build the knife, you order it from them, then they send it to me, and you and I work on a sheath system for it together, okay? So it becomes a knife and sheath system, and that's what I like to put out. That's what I like to offer people in the high-end range, because I feel that all of these knife designs and all of these sheaths and sheath designs are very effective in the field. As well, I can give you many different carry options in one sheet, depending on the size, what you want, etc. Okay, so here it is, the Little Hawk Necker. This one, I believe, is 80 CRV2, I think, pretty sure. 80 CRV2. It 
it's not a super high-end steel but it is a tried and true steel um it, it could be 1095 i can't i can't remember what we settled on for this one okay but he does work with several different steels so all i care about is that it holds an edge and does what i want it to do and this does okay it is razor sharp Okay, razor sharp, so it, it shaves hair. So this is the first knife I want to show you guys. Now I'm not going to work with these knives, I'm just going to show them to you. <clears throat> and if you like whatever it is I'm showing, then check it out, go, go investigate it. A lot of these knives can be found on eBay, okay? Some of them are customs, okay, like this one. So a knife like this, a custom knife like this is about 250 bucks, okay? Your choice of scales and liners and, you know, this is um, Green Elder Burl, which I thought was really neat looking wood, stabilized, very nice knife. He does a great job on these. And the design lends itself to effectiveness in the field, okay? It has a full-size handle that you can put all four fingers on while not being too long. Extra handle that you don't need, okay? Um, and it feather sticks. This thing will even baton small pieces of wood. And that's... I use this knife for 90% of my camp chores, 90%. I just pop it off, right, I pop it off out of the sheath, I use it, uh, generally depending on how long I use it, I'll strop it, right, and then it goes right back in the sheath for the next time I need it, okay? So that is the Little Hawk Necker, right, I, I, I just, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's up. Hmm. I'll get some of the customs out of the way. This is a Peter Kohler hand forged Tavi. Okay, now I'm going to show both of these to you real quick okay this is the production tavi that just hit the market a few weeks ago production tavi hand forged tavi okay they're different right hand forged production knives are usually different than the production version okay so there's that Pete made this one for me to go with another knife that he made for me okay this one is, I think, either 52100 or W2 steel. I have a bad memory. Okay? So this is the hand-forged version, right? Here's the sheath system I built for it. Now this is also, this is a necker, right? And a pocket carry. It can do both, okay? When it's a necker, I don't need the ulti clip. I can take it off, okay? I just leave it on there. It's no big deal, right? I also have our flip-out ferro rod on this, okay? Where the actual sheath becomes the handle for the ferro rod, all right? The sheath becomes the handle. All right, sheath becomes the handle. Works very effective, um, always clockwise if you can, okay? Goes right back onto the sheath, it stays there, no problem. It's a simple, effective system, okay? Um, where you don't need a holder for the ferro rod, it just stays on the sheath at all times. Um, it works well, or I wouldn't do it. Um, 
And then also have a Santo Compass on there, you know, a, a double waterman's knot lanyard. I also have the the uh, fast hubs, these things. Right, fast hub. They work real well. I like them both, actually. Okay, so this is the Tavi from Peter Kohler, Dark Timber Custom Knives. And then there's the production version, okay, of the Tavi. Now, let's talk about the sheath for this, okay. Um, now, this is just my opinion, okay. This is the sheath that comes with this knife, okay. In my opinion, all right. If you keep this knife in this sheath, you're going to lose the knife, okay? You're going to lose it. Eventually, you will lose this knife. If you spend enough time in the outdoors and you're using this sheath, you're probably going to lose the knife at some point, okay? So my recommendation is, and you don't have to get it from me, I'm just saying, Kydex is the way to go, okay? That way you won't lose this knife. Especially if I build the sheath, okay? Um, is it a decent leather sheath? Sure it is. Sure it is, as far as leather sheaths go. But leather sheaths are notorious for no retention. Even if you wet mold it, a lot of times this thing will find its way out. Okay? So, production Tavi, very nice. Uh, smaller EDC field knife, right? I can, I can make you a necker for this too, right? Very nice knife. Uh, Pete had the presence of mind to roll the spine right here. The thumb pushes. Makes it very comfortable. Um, again, can't remember the steel. Um, I'm going to say Nitro. Nitro V maybe. I can't remember. Okay, But if Pete made it, if it's a production dark timber, it is an awesome steel for this knife, okay? Just check it out. Um, the production Tavi from Dark Timber Custom Knives, okay? Great little field knife. I've, I've tested all these knives, okay? Great little field knife, all right? Uh, what's next? Hmm. What are we going to go for? Trying to go from smallest to largest. Here's a knife right here. I just want to get into this real quick, okay? This is a K-Bar. I can't remember the name of it. But it has a hollow grind, and that's what I'm going to pick on here. <laughs> a lot of guys don't like hollow grind knives, okay? This is a very small necker-sized EDC for the field. I have not tested it. I don't like the knife, okay? Um, but I'm sure it is a capable knife. The reason I'm showing it is because of this hollow grind. Hollow grinds do one thing very well, slice. Okay, they slice very well, as long as you have the right edge on it, okay? Other than that, I really don't like hollow grinds because they're weak. At the edge point okay they're weak but for a smaller knife I think it's okay to have a hollow grind you're not doing a whole lot of hard work with this and you're probably not going to chip the blade because in order to chip the blade you got to do some hard stuff with the knife right generally okay so this is K bar uh, I wish I remembered the name of this it says adventure adventure on the so if anybody knows what this is called put it in the comments below um, I'm only showing it because of the hollow grind okay that's it okay um what's next let's go with this guy here this is a very affordable production knife it is called the tops Scandi Trekker right Tops Scandi Trekker. It has a high Scandi grind, eighth inch thick steel, and 
most of these knives are on the thinner steel side, which I like in the field for a small knife. Okay, there is no need whatsoever to have a quarter inch thick small knife. No need whatsoever. Okay, however, some makers like that thick steel, they like heavy, robust knives, but especially for smaller knives, it's just overkill. Okay, so eighth inch top Scandi Trekker feels great in the hand. Very sure purchase. Uh, my Carta scales, these, this one have, has white liners. Um, just an all around, decently priced, smaller field knife that you can use as a necker as well. Or IWB, or a pocket sheath, or whatever you want, okay? I can do it, anything you want, okay? Scandi Trekker nice affordable field knife okay in the this is a three inch range okay three inch range on this one okay um let's show this this is an anza now this one also has a hollow grind Ooh, that was good it, it's better the second time around all right this is an Anza Bastard File Knife, okay? What I really like about this one is I use this one for urban carry, okay? Um, if I go down into the city in a bad neighborhood or down to the harbor or whatever, I'm usually sporting this guy right here, okay? It is an effective self-defense knife um, because it has a really long handle. Very good purchase. Um, a sure uh, finger guard it's, it, it sharpens up like nobody's business it's it's it was a file at one time okay um, it does have a hollow grind but a, a hollow grind self-defense knife they kind of go together a lot a lot of the time okay so Anza it can it can uh, double as a field knife as well but this is uh, one of my urban EDC's okay it's just a, a, a sure little knife um, eighth inch thick really really decent um, and I, I think they're like I don't know $180 something like that in that range okay um, so let me put this one over here that's an Anza you can get them on eBay Anza they're all custom made, those Anzas, right? Um, let me put these guys away. Uh, let's go to the Falk Niven, Falk Niven F1, okay? Now, this is a tried and true knife that's been around for a long time. Um, uh, VG10 laminated steel, pretty decent. On a bigger knife, this steel can can be chippy, right? Can be a little chippy. It's in the higher Rockwell range sometimes. But full convex grind. Um, I think the thickness is a little thick for this knife. It's uh, 530 seconds. But it's not super overkill. Um, they could have gotten away with eighth inch steel on this knife. Okay. But... There is this predisposition for guys to fall into this. I gotta have a thick knife if I'm gonna be using it in the field. I don't want it to break. You're not breaking a knife unless you're abusing it. Okay, generally, right? So five thirty second. They they could have gone with eighth inch. That's all I'm saying here. Um, very comfortable, hard rubber handle. Um, nice and texturized. Comfortable grip, um, sharp, sharp edge when you get it. Um, just a, a nice field knife. It really works well. I know guys that dress deer with these things, and you know, you use it, you strop it. You use it, you strop it. If you use it, use it, use it, use it, use it, you're probably going to have to sharpen it, okay? 
but generally I don't use it and use it, use it, use it, use it until it gets dull. I use it a couple of times, I strop it. I use it, I strop it. So it stays razor sharp all the time. Okay, that's how I do it in the field. Um, it's a little warm out here. Um, uh, I have a couple of videos I just posted with, within the last week. Um, and one of those videos shows me stropping a knife after using it in the field. Um, what knife was I using? Uh, the Delta Whiskey Farn Hawk. This guy. Okay, so we're going to get to this one. Okay, so that is the Falk Niven F1 VG10 laminated steel. It's a, it's a good steel. It's a good steel. I'm not going to get into the technical specs of these steels because it really doesn't matter. If it's a good field knife, it's a good field knife, right? Um, if you're particularly fond of a certain type of steel, great. Then look for a knife in that steel. But you might not be able to find one in your use category. You know what I mean? So, there it is. The F1, iconic been on the on the market a long time they've sold probably a million of these you know or more all right Falk Niven F1 now here is a really I'm only showing you this because you can get decent smaller knives like a neck knife type style knife on eBay okay if you know what you're looking for okay now this is a knife that I, I, I took a gamble on, okay? This thing sharpens up like nobody's business, stays sharp, and has a decent design to it. The handle's a little short though, okay? Um, but if you want something budget, you can find them out there, right? I think I paid 20 bucks for this knife, titanium coated, you know, which I don't give a crap about. But decent little budget field knife. The Condor Mini Bush Lure. Another decent, well-made, well-designed field knife that's in the smaller range. Okay? Um, and this is a Necker. Made a Necker for it. I don't use it a lot. I just have other knives I like more, a lot more. Um, okay, so we're going to go a little bigger here. Um, this is a, well, not bigger, but this is a uh, Field Series 1, I believe. A Mike Wallace Field Series 1. Pretty sure that that's what this is. Now, several years ago, I was invited out to Mike Wallace's shop, okay? I didn't take any video because the shop actually belongs to Cold Steel. Okay, Mike and his partner, Andrew Demko, they build all the prototypes for cold steel, okay? And that's the shop they use. So I didn't take any video of that. But while I was there, this was on a Saturday on Mike's own time, um, he built me this knife. I had just met him an hour before he built this. He said, I'm going to make you a knife right here. I said, cool. He said, what do you want? I said, I could use a necker, right? I like neck knives. They're functional. But I don't like every neck knife out there, right? So, he built me this. Sharp, 90 degree spine. Number one for me in the field, okay? Um, you can do a lot with a sharp spine. This is a full flat grind. And I put my, like, signature edge, low shoulder convex grind on it. This thing is a Badass in the field. Badass. Okay? Uh, you know, you don't normally find, associate smaller knives with being able to feather stick, right? But this thing here is a slicing wonder. See these fine little, fine little curls? Just really feather sticks well. I'm very impressed with uh, the geometry of this knife. Okay, 
Mike does an awesome job. He is one of my most favoritest <laughs> knife builders. He builds a knife. A lot of military guys love his knives because they are tough as hell. Okay? And he's got great designs. His Spear 2 and his Spear 1, great designs. Now, he builds several of my designs as well. The LMF, the BMF, and the Delta Whiskey Backcountry. I don't have them out here. They're bigger knives. Okay? Um, but he's a great guy. So, him and I collaborated on those designs. And if you want to see them, go on my website. Check out my YouTube channel. Go to Mike Wallace's website. You can check out some of his knives. www.wallaceedgedtools.com Okay? So... This was a gift from him, the very first time I met him. This is his old meteorite finish. He doesn't do it anymore. He does what he calls a textured finish now, which looks a lot like this, only a little different. He also does another texture where he rounds the whole handle for you, right, to give it that Coke bottle-ish look and feel. Okay, so Field Series 1. I turned it into a Necker. It's got a uh, a uh, flip out ferro rod. I personally love these flip out ferro rods. No muss, no fuss. They work and they work well. Okay, the whole sheath becomes the handle for the ferro rod. And if if, if you're used to striking ferro rods, it can be difficult to hold on to that thing. That's why I give you a a honking handle, right? Works very well, okay? So, there's that one. That's one of my neckers that I use a lot. Um, there's another one, the field mouse. This is a Mike Wallace field mouse. Again, it's got my low shoulder convex grind on it. It is a slicing wonder, okay? It really does a good job. I'm a big fanatic about knives, they must feather stick well. Because for me, that is the true test of how a blade slices. Feather sticking, it's wood, okay? So, in my opinion, that is a true test. If it feather sticks well, you can get nice fine curls out of it. It's going to be a badass field knife for you, okay? And you can engineer that edge to be pretty tough. This is a low shoulder convex grind, which means it's got a lot of meat behind it, but it's very slicey, okay? Proof's in the pudding, guys. A lot of knives cannot do this. I don't care how cool they look. A lot of knives cannot do this, okay? Now, a lot of Scandi grind knives are great slicers. That is a slicing edge as well. They make great bushcraft style knives, a Scandi edge. But if you're going to get that kind of performance out of a convex edge, you got to do what I call a low shouldered convex, where it's a cross between a nice slicey edge and a nice tough edge with meat behind it so it's not chipping and rolling and all that kind of stuff, right? You got to engineer your edge to, to do this stuff, right? Because out of the box, a lot of knives will not do that, okay? It's just plain and simple. Try it. Take a... A knife out of a box with a, a, a regular va factory V edge, okay? And try to get effective, easily made curls out of it, okay? Try to do it. Try to do it. A lot of times, it just doesn't work well, okay? This works all the time, every time, right? So there's that. This is the field mouse. 
um, it's one of my heavier neck knives um, he could have gone down to this is just over an eighth of an inch I would like to see this knife in eighth inch even sixteenth okay he could even do this in a sixteenth of an inch if he can get CPM 154 in that thickness I don't know if he can CPM 154 that's another reason why I love his knives he's got it down to a science CPM 3V or CPM 154 that's what he works with super steels they're great they're not too expensive they hold a great edge they're not too difficult to sharpen in the field they strop up nice etc etc some of those super steels are really hard and really difficult to sharpen okay the field mouse Mike Wallace uh, what's next okay we're gonna go with this guy right here okay now this is in the bigger range of the four inch you know we're up to the four inch style four inch blades now this is a, a four inch blade four and a quarter maybe this is the Delta Whiskey Farn Hawk my design it's a collaboration between Sam Farnworth at Firekeeper Forge right and myself he builds the knife you order it from him then he sends it to me and you and I work on a sheath system together okay this is walnut burl this is my personal farn hawk okay this is a very effective field design that has fighting knife qualities as well okay it's got a quasi double hand guard okay for choking up um, you know self-defense knives fighting knives a lot of them have a double hand guard for sure purchase you know <laughs> so you don't lose the knife right because um, I tell you when when handles get especially blood on them blood is slick it's really slippery stuff <laughs> okay it's got uh, albumin in it and albumin is like um, I don't know it's like a glue I guess it's it's a gluey but inside the blood it makes it really slippery okay so this is the Delta Whiskey Farn Hawk this is probably my most used smaller field knife right now okay um, just because it's small nimble spry I like it um, and it's not heavy at all um, this is 530 seconds could have been made out of eighth inch right very lightweight here's the sheath I built for it now this is designed specifically to go on the shoulder strap of my backpack and generally I have it sitting up here so that it sticks out a little bit okay the reason I do it that way is so if I need to use the light I can and I don't need my hands to do it okay but you got to have a strap up there in order to do it this way right so th these lights are very effective. These tactical lights I put on here. Um, this is a Phoenix LD02. It is a tried and true, nice tactical light that you can use while it's on the sheath, right? All I gotta do is turn it on. And I'm walking down the trail and the whole trail's lit up, okay? Because it's sitting like this on my shoulder strap, right? But even if I have it down here, all I got to do is lift it up a little bit, right? So, great. This is one of my got to have it on my sheath options, right? Because, like, you need a light all the time. Why not have one on your, your sheath as an option? They're not heavy, right? It does not add that much extra weight to this knife that would cause you to say oh no no that's getting too heavy come on <laughs> for what it does <laughs> um, it also has a flip out ferro rod on it which is another must have gotta have a ferro rod on my sheaths for the for field use 
okay? Generally, depends, but generally. Um, and then there is uh, a center mounted molly lock, which by which I attach it to the uh, shoulder strap, okay? This one rides in the center via a mount plate, which you can also put a tech lock on here as well if you want, okay? Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with my sheath systems. All you got to do is kind of like think about it, you know? And then I got a striker here just in case I need it underneath the mount plate. It stays there. It's under tension, okay? Works real well. Shore up plate on the front. Gives this play, uh, this Kydex here a little bit more, a um, little bit more stability, so it's not bending too much when you strike. Because you got to put a lot of pressure on a ferro rod. Okay, so that's generally what I use the shore up plate for. Plus, it holds my logo, right? Delta Whiskey Foreign Hawk. One of the most effective field knives I have ever used, right? Yeah, I designed it, but hey, you know what I mean? I know what I like in the field. I know what works in the field for me. There's that one. This is Black Brick Kydex with uh, Cryptek Micro Red, okay? There's that one. Um, let's get to the taupe. TDC, okay? Tote TDC. Now, you know, I noticed something. I was looking at these two knives last night, and Dan Tope is a great knife designer, knife, uh, great knife builder. Um, look at the design of these two knives, and look at how close in design they are, okay? Now, I didn't even know about this knife when I designed this. I'm not even sure this knife was out when this was designed. I have no idea, but I was looking at it yesterday and look how close they are. Okay? That's a pretty close, even with the swedge here. Okay? Now the swedge was not my idea. It was Sam Farnhawk's idea. Um, I'd be okay with just flat steel up here. It gives you a better edge to strike a ferro rod if you need to. Okay? Sharp 90 degree spine, but Look at that. Just saying, very effective field knife, this guy right here. Very light. Um, I think the steel is 16th of an inch. 16th? Nah, it looks like 8th inch. It looks 8th inch to me. Yeah, I think it's 8th inch. Um, CPM 3V, great steel for this knife. This is... Um, uh, 80 CRV2, another great steel, high carbon, holds a great edge, easy to sharpen. This is a super steel, okay? I wish more of my knife makers, my custom guys, worked with CPM3V, because I'd be having all my knives built out of that steel. But I'm okay with 80 CRV2. It holds its own, okay? It will rust. If you don't take care of that blade, though, it will rust. So, be forewarned. Taupe TDC. I I really like this knife. I, I, I wish I could make some kind of deal with Dan Taupe to get one of these. I would love to have one of these knives. He does a great job. He's a great knife builder. So... Okay, so let's go to the Spyderco Aquasol, okay? Now, I'm pretty sure this knife was designed and made for water operations, maritime operations, uh, kayaking, canoeing, boating, yachting, all that stuff, okay? Um, however, I could be wrong. Um, it's also, I think it was also designed for emergency workers, SARS, you know, survival rescue, um, EMTs, cops, uh, you know, uh, military operators in, in some cases. 
Uh, it's got a serrated edge, which not my favorite type of edge, um, but this thing will cut a seat belt in no time flat, right? So that's why it's, it's great for, for emergency uh, services personnel uh, because they have to do a lot of seat belt cutting. They come up to a car accident and, you know, it's a lot of crap's going on. They got to get the person out of the car quick. He's in a seat belt. The seat belt mechanism is jammed or whatever. Just cut it, okay? That's where these really excel. Rope and webbing. They cut very well. Easy. Goes right through it. Whereas a regular knife might have a difficult time with it, depending on the knife. The Aqua Salt. I thought I would just include it in this series because um, it is a specialty style knife. Okay? Real lightweight. Um, I don't know what the steel is, um, but it's got, you know, Sekai City, Japan, uh, Spyderco Aqua Salt. Okay? Could be used as a self defense, you know, type style knife. But uh, it's cool, right? Um, but it's got that serrated edge. And generally, I don't have much use for a serrated edge. All my low shoulder convex grinds will cut seat belts. So, um, just saying. Um, I'm getting ready to throw a, a sheath system on this for a guy. And he wants it mounted to uh, a thigh rig, right? A thigh rig. So, we'll see see how that goes. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, I just I brought this one out because this is more of a... other world type of knife, okay? Not your normal, everyday EDC, okay? This is a very high-end, cottage industry made knife. Okay, it's called the Copper Shed Element. Very tough knife. Okay, almost quarter inch steel. Very tough. If you're going to pry with a knife, this would be the knife to do it with. Nice and short, nice and thick. CPM 3V. Um, this is a Tonto style. He has other styles as well. And I'm putting sheaths on these for Copper Shed Outdoors, uh, 50 at a time. So, and this, this is what they look like. This is an OD green brick pattern, okay? Most of them, however, are black. Black brick, that's what he wanted. But I throw in a few of these for guys who might not want the black brick. Um, this is a cool Kydex. I love it. Neat looking. I also have it in Coyote, um, but this is how they come, just like this, with a belt clip on the back, my combat lock belt clip, and uh, just a neat EDC that you might want to check out. They are pricey, um, but this is the best of the best in this style of knife, okay? It's called the Element. Just thought I would show it for guys who like this kind of stuff. Because he sells the crap out of these. Alright? <laughs> okay. Last but not least. The Dark Timber Skinny Woodsman. Okay? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is 80 CRV2. I think. Pretty sure. Um, uh, looks like a flat grind. Right? Half flat grind here. Uh, 5 30 seconds inch thick. This one has toxic green liners. Um, this is my knife. Uh, Pete, Pete, you know, acquired it for me um, at my request. Really nice knife. I like it. Do I use it? No, I don't use it that often. Uh, it's got a factory V edge, and given what dark timbers are becoming, you know, collector's items type thing. They're very popular. I don't want to change it. Okay? So it's going to stay the way it is. So the fact that it's going to stay the way it is means I'm not going to use it. 
okay? Um, because I'm not fond of this type of edge. However, they're okay. They work well out of the box, you know? Just doesn't have the slicing capability that I like, okay? And, you know, you might be sitting there saying, what? What? Okay? <laughs> it's just my opinion, guys. From doing the actual field work, right? This does not slice as well as I like it to, okay? But not just this, okay? This is a great knife. It's got a factory edge. I just don't like factory edges, right? I change them usually um, into, you know, low shoulder convex grind that slices better, but is still very strong, okay? Um, so, Dark Timber Skinny Woodsman, here's the sheath system I built for it. This one happens to have a small diamond plate on the back. Fine. They work really well for the field. Okay? You flip it out. Now, this one's kind of hard. I got it nice and tight. Okay? You flip it out. You sharpen your knife, right? If it needs to be sharpened. If it doesn't need to be sharpened, leave this alone. Put it on a strop. But if you use it to where it's dull this thing will bring it back right away it's a diamond stone a fine diamond plate okay um and i put them on for guys who want something small for the field okay that they're not going to lose right that's integral with the sheath right so that's the way it is on this one uh and then a face mount ferro rod these have 90 degree spines, so they strike a ferro rod real well. Um, great knife. I love it. It's well designed, comfortable, um, but I don't use it that often. I want it to stay the way it is, okay? Uh, and that's it. Uh, that's it for... Now, I have other knives in this category, this 2.5 to 4 inch EDC type category. But these are the ones I like the most. Okay? Now, are there other knives that are just as effective as these? Probably. This is what I like. But this is what I'm going to show you. Okay? So, thanks for watching. Uh, hmm. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, try to subscribe if you would, please. It, it really helps me boost the channel so that I can bring you stuff like this. I add to my knife collection all the time. I have like two, three hundred knives, right? Not all of which do I use. Some of them are users. Some of them are favorites. Some are Mark, okay? But I like them for some reason, okay? Um, yeah, I own Bark Rivers. I own LT Wrights. I own, you know, my, uh, my Mike Wallace's, uh, Dark Timbers, I got hand-forged Dark Timbers that I have, um, uh, I don't have a Dan Tope, one of these days I'll get one, uh, I do like his knives, he does a very good job, uh, you know, I got all, all types, Cold Steel, uh, I, can't even, I can't even think there's so many of them, right, um, you know, I got some CFKs, which are kind of controversial, but I got some, right? All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. See ya! Be safe out there, and remember to cover your six. Feather sticking does not hurt a knife at all, so I'm trying to get a nice flat edge so I can judge it fairly.
And I'm not altogether sure how sharp this is, but it feather sticks okay. It feather sticks okay with this edge. All right. Uh, I really like the way the uh, the little hawk feathers. But I've designed this edge to do this too. All right. I designed it to feather well. And right out of the box, a lot of knives are not designed, you know, edgewise to do this. That's why if you want a really effective edge, a lot of the time you got to change the grind of your edge, right? Which that is no, that's not the fault of the maker. The maker's going to put on an all-purpose edge for you and it's up to you to change it if you have to this edge really bites well too all right this does okay it's pretty decent See how the feathers are bigger though? Uh, if you change this edge, you can get really fine curls easier. Now yeah, you can get really fine curls if you reduce the pressure, but then when you reduce the pressure, it doesn't bite as well. Okay? When I engineered this edge to go with light pressure, it, it bites well. You get what I'm saying? It bites better. Um, I like this knife. I really do. Dan, Tope, if you're watching this, I really like this knife, brother. You did a great job. Nice and light. That's what I really like about it. Light and comfortable, right? But still very strong. CPM3V, good, good choice. Good choice of steel. Let's see how well a serrated edge will feather. <laughs> if you can get it in one of the scallops, it, they, it works pretty well, I guess. But not this edge is really not designed for this kind of work. Okay, will it do it? Sure, if you're a decent feather sticker, it will. It'll give you feathers, right? But it's not designed for it. I mean, you, you definitely can't use the whole edge. It just doesn't work. There's, there's too much space in between those scallops. But will it work? Yeah, it'll work. Let's see how the element feather sticks. Now, this thing has a very, very sharp edge. Okay? And it's nice and thin, too. So... It's going to be a decent slicer. Um, so the element can be used for a decent field knife. You know? Yeah. Good job. Very nice. But this is a... <laughs> they sharpen these to the nth degree. You could, like, shave gnat hair with this. I, it's kind of growing on me. I, I like it. It's comfortable, too. Plus, for you guys who love to drink beer, bam. Got a bottle opener and a pry bar. Okay? Hey, when's the last time you uh, needed a pry bar, right? Like, yesterday I needed one. This morning I needed one. So, <laughs> neat knife, really neat knife, and bomb-proof. I tell you, at the end of a nuclear apocalypse, there'll be two things living, 
roaches well two things existing roaches and this knife <laughs> all right um, so that's cool let's see what the Scandi woodsman will do now this is this this and, 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 according to the name this is supposed to be a effective woods knife um, maybe Pete uh, intended it for hunting uh, it, it feather sticks too. See? You have to push a little harder because of the because of the actual edge, but it'll feather. Nice wispy curls. And get a little thicker. In order to get thick curls, you really got to push hard. But it does it. Good job. Um, it, it, the, effective, the effectiveness of this edge comes in anybody can do it, right? Anybody can feather with this edge. It just, it bites. You know what I mean? It does a, it, it bites well. Where's my, uh... Here's another one. This one's even thinner than my little hawk. This edge here. This is my uh, field mouse. Mike Wallace field mouse. That's razor sharp. In order to feather effectively, you got to hit the ridges. So if you don't have ridges, you got to make them. So that's why you see a lot of guys when they feather stick. The first thing they'll do is they'll get a flat edge. They'll do this, right? They'll take a bunch of wood off first, right? So that they got something to feather with. Sometimes it can take a little work to get that edge. You know, the, the, uh, the ridges, the ridges is what I'm talking about. See, this is a perfect ridge right here. See that? And some wood feathers easier than others. So you gotta, a lot of times you gotta prep the wood in order for it to feather well. Bulk never really bites, but it's got that convex grind and a convex edge, so it's got both. It's got the double whammy. This is the way my Delta Whiskey Viper is. The, uh, convex grind and a convex edge. Here's a full-on Scandi grind. Full-on Scandi grind. Are usually very good woodworkers. This is the hand forged Tavi, which I did change the edge on this one. Not quite where I want it, but it's a work in progress.
It's a work in progress. This thing's a feather sticking wonder. This thing can even feather stick on the flat. <laughs> So you got to remember, when it comes to the effectiveness of a knife in the field, there's basically two equations. You have the grind of the knife, like this is a hollow grind, right? And the grind of the edge. They work in tandem to give you whatever effectiveness that it's given you, right? <laughs> that's you know decent edge plus the hollow grind really slicey <laughs> 